So, hello there, and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanya Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over the unknown, and you could also call it hidden and undocumented, Google Dictionary API. Uh, now, this is a pretty special API, since hardly anyone knows about this, uh, because Google does not document this feature, uh, and hard, so hardly anyone knows about it. Uh, however, it is a thing, and if you're looking to put a uh, free dictionary API into your app if you need it or something, then this is the way to go. Uh, so today I'm going to be explaining exactly how it works, uh, a class that I made called tDictionary that will automatically connect to this and get all the definitions for you in an array of strings, uh, and yeah, we'll see the app then. So now I'm going to explain exactly how this works, and then we'll get into the code. So let's start. Uh, first of all, uh, this sort of works like Swift databases. However, the thing is in this app uh, that we're using JSON to convert to strings uh, instead of a dictionary or an array. Uh, so as you can see, it, but it does use dictionaries and arrays in the process uh, to getting the string. But the end result is a string, not a table of things. So as you can see, I have the unknown Google Dictionary API title written here. And so what happens first uh, is that our NS data will get the contents of the URL for the Google Dictionary API. And I'm just going to call that GD API for now. OK. So this is the Google Dictionary API over here. So our app, let's just say it asked for the meaning of something like um, colorless. OK, so what would happen, this uh, Google Dictionary API would r result uh, in some JSON for us. Uh, so then this comes over here. And oh, oh, by the way, this is also PHP. So it's basically a PHP end that's helping us. Uh, however, this is an external API, not controlled by us. OK, so this is external, not controlled. by us. OK, so this is external, and it's not controlled by us. Uh, so we can't really customize this at all. But Google gives you enough information in their API anyway. So then once we get JSON, uh, we parse it uh, with Swift. Uh, then after parsing, uh, we get an array of strings. So that's uh, basically how this will work. Uh, and so it goes from the Google Dictionary API, goes through a lot of steps, comes to this, the array of strings. Uh, so that's basically how this is going to work. Uh, and yes, I'll meet you at the Mac part of the video. Uh, and so yeah, let's get to it. So hello there, and welcome back to the Mac part of the video. Uh, and now I'm going to be explaining the code behind this app and the actual app itself. Uh, so now I'm going to be debugging the app so that you can actually see how this works. And I'm going to give you an example uh, by finding the definition for a symbol word, uh, maybe something like Apple. Let's just click on the Find Definition button here. As you can see, it'll take a few seconds, uh, but this goes to the Google Dictionary API, uh, and it will find all three definitions for the word Apple. And in case we want to confirm this is from Google, we can just go into Google and type define uh, space uh, Apple. And then it'll give us, or at least it should give us, uh, the two, uh, or here it gives us an extra um, uh, definition. But let's just see here. Yeah, as you can see, it gives us three definitions. So this means it's exactly from Google. It just copied, it's basically just searching to find in Google. You get the same result. Uh, so if you really want to include that in your app, I've created a, a really simple class to use that will uh, allow you to find the definitions for a word as a string, and it returns uh, an array of strings, uh, which is the all the definitions. Uh, so that really works out. And so let's just get definition for another one so you can really see how this works. Water. As you can see, it finds all the meanings. Uh, I can do something like uh, USB. I'm not exactly sure if it'll get a definition for this. Maybe it does. Yeah, it doesn't. Anyway, uh, but it does work with most words, uh, whatever Google has. Uh, and now I will be going into the code so that we can actually see how this thing works. Uh, so let's start with the UI. 
Uh, it's an extremely simple UI. It doesn't really have much in it. It's just a text view where we can put our output, uh, another uh, text field where we can put in our input, and a button where we can click on the find definition in order for it to find a definition. After that, we just have our normal app delegate class that we usually do with Mac apps. Uh, so I just created a little extension to NS window that we no longer need uh, in our app. That should work. Okay, perfect. Uh, so in the beginning, we just take the IB Outlet's word input and word output as both NS text fields, uh, and then we create a new T dictionary, which I will explain in just a moment. Uh, this is the custom class that I created that allows you to get the definition for any word uh, that the Google dictionary has. Uh, then we have the function application did finish launching uh, from NS application delegate. I think it must be. Um, not exactly sure which class it's from or what we can do is just click command, click on it, and it tells us that this is actually from our own class. Uh, so that's uh, that. This will uh, run whenever we start the app, and what we want to do is we want to create a temporary frame which is equal to our windows frame uh, we can uh, create uh, we can change its size to something that we want uh, and in this case I'm setting it to width 816 uh, height 600 uh, and then I'm setting a windows frame to that temp frame that we just created and I do want it to display on screen then after that we have an IV action which is hooked up to our button uh, which will find the definition for a word and unfortunately uh, Xcode requires us to take the sender so I do that. After that we have the word output wh dot string value is equal to nothing because I want to clear whatever is already in the word output text field. After that I am creating the definitions uh, array. Uh, which is basically my dictionary over here that we have dot find definitions for the word input dot string value so that we're taking whatever was in the word input and we're finding the definitions for it. After that we are creating the var formatted definitions is equal to first of all we want to put in whatever definition they asked for as you can see if I open this up it is uh, let's just get some random uh, as you can see, uh, it shows whatever they put in, and then a colon, as you can see over here, uh, and then a new line, so it formats that. Uh, then we are going for in val in defs.enumerate, so we are enumerating uh, the definitions array, and then we are looping for every index and value inside of that array. Uh, then we're checking if the index is equal to defs.count minus one, meaning this is the last uh, uh, definition, then all you need to do is add a tab, a dash, and then the actual definition itself. If it's zero, meaning this is the first one, then you just do the same thing, tab, dash, uh, or the uh, definition, then also you put a new line, and then we do the same thing for the middle. The reason I uh, separated the first and middle is let's just say you want to do something different for the first one, uh, the last one, and the middle one, you should be able to, and that's why I just did it. Uh, and then so after that, what I did, what I went ahead and did, was if the formatted definitions is just equal to uh, the word input and then a new line with the colon, then that means it didn't find any definitions. So then we just set it to did not find any difference, uh, definitions for word, and then we give it word input dot string value. Uh, so then if that ever happen, if that does not happen, however, uh, then word output dot string value is equal to formatted definitions. Uh, so that if there were no definitions, we should be able to tell them that, hey, there's no definitions here. Uh, but if there are, then we just put them inside of the word output text field uh, after having formatted them. Uh, now I'll show you the custom class that I created called T-Dictionary, and this will be in the description for download. I'm just going to click on it. Uh, and so this is the class T Dictionary. It has one function and only one sole purpose, which is to go to the Google Dictionary API and catch the meaning of any word that you give it. So as you can see, this is a really long Google APIs link, which will allow us to go to the dictionary in Google, uh, and it will query out the word that we want it to. Uh, in order to give you an example, I've already opened up uh, Google Chrome here, and if I go to the link, as you can see, I've put the Google API link over here and I've set my query to Apple. Uh, it gives us a JSON result 
uh, which has the kind, uh, and then the kind, it has the TTL, and it has all the data. This is the data type, uh, the meanings, the type, the form actually, and stuff like that. So that's really interesting how it does that. And so now, how do we parse all of this complicated JSON? This is way too much for me to understand, and this is just so much. How do I do this? Well, it's really simple. All you do is you go to Google and you type in JSON Reader. Uh, and then you want to go to this website, jsonviewer.stack.hu. And then once you go into this one, uh, you just copy in all of your JSON. Okay? Uh, and then you just go to this little viewer tab. Okay, and then it formats this JSON so nicely for you. You can see that, okay, these are curly braces. This means that this is a dictionary. So I'll look into that. I'll convert to dictionary first. Then I'll look, I, oh, I want the data. That's an array. So I'm going to convert this uh, to an array. After that, I look, okay, I only have one element. So I'm going to create the, I'm going to loop through and convert them all to dictionaries. Uh, then we're going to see that, okay, under zero, we have data type dictionary and also the curly braces, as I said. So the, this is a dictionary, and we will be converting to dictionary, and then I just go back into the, into the dictionary. Uh, and then we see our word that we got, uh, the definition data, and just, we keep going on until we reach all of these definitions here. And then we have a little nice tree to follow that we can convert in Xcode. So now, as you can see, I've done just that. I've created the variable JSON data, uh, the variable JSON, uh, and then I'm using a do block uh, to be able to use the try statement in order to find the JSON data and the JSON itself. So what I'm checking uh, is if we have a correct URL uh, and if we can get the contents of the URL uh, of the URL that we just got, uh, then what we want to do is the JSON data is equal to the contents of that URL in NS data format, and then we're forcing an unwrap here and also here for the NS URL. Then we have the JSON variable uh, where we will try to do NSJSON serialization dot JSON object with data. We're giving the JSON data and we're using the options NSJSON reading options dot mutable containers, and then we are forcing this. Uh, as a downcast to NS dictionary. Uh, but if there's an error while we do this, it will just catch it and print it. Uh, so this is one of those sorry excuses for a try catch in Swift. The reason I say that this is this isn't the best is because think about this. It's a it's basically a try catch, but it's been renamed to do catch. That I'm okay with that because I can always adjust to newer keywords. But then the problem is if you think about it, whatever you put in the do statement that has to be checked has to be marked with try. And that's really annoying. If you have code in a do statement, the only reason you have it there is because you want to check if this is actually executing nicely or else you want to catch it and print it. Uh, but it's okay. I mean, we have to do this. Uh, so then we are just trying to do the NSJSON serialization. Uh, so after that, uh, we are checking uh, if in the JSON we have a member called data. If we do, or else we just return a blank array. Okay. If we do, then that means everything else has to be correct due to the way that the Google Dictionary works. So then we just loop through the entire. We just create the entire tree, as I said. So we go into data. So okay, I'm just gonna minimize everything for you so that you can see it from scratch. Okay. So we have the JSON, which we get. Then we're going into the data as an NS array over here. Uh, then we are going into data zero as an NS dictionary. Uh, and then just a second. Uh, then we are going into dictionary as an NS dictionary. Okay. Then we are going into definition data as an NS array. Uh, and then we are going into uh, uh, we have the definition data, sorry, and then we want to get the definition da uh, data zero from it, so we want to go to the zero. Uh, then we want to get the meanings as an NS array. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a final meanings uh, array of strings. Uh, we are going to loop through all the meanings, uh, and if, uh, if there is an actual meaning for that current uh, meaning that we're on, 
then we want to append it to our final meanings array. And then we just return those final meanings. So that's basically how this app works. I'm just going to show you another quick demo so that you can really see how this works. So let's just say something like, uh, does it have the definition for JSON? Let's see. Nope. Uh, it doesn't really have much for stuff like uh, computers. Uh, but does it have a definition uh, for um, this one, maybe something like computer? So then this should be able to. Perfect. It gives us an electronic device for storing and processing data, typically in binary form, according to instructions given to it in a variable program. Uh, so yeah, that's basically how my T Dictionary app works. Uh, my API will be down in the description uh, in a GitHub repository. So will the example source code. So you can just look in the description for that. I will also be uploading the source code for the last video I did that I did not yet, uh, but I will be now. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, you can subscribe to my channel if you're new and you like my content and you want to see more of it. Uh, you can like my videos if you like them. Uh, and you can please actually comment down if you have an, any questions that I will get back to as soon as possible. You can always email me uh, at my email, tajimani at gmail.com. If you didn't understand that, that will be down in the description as well. And yeah, goodbye.